In this lecture, we will continue our discussion on how to convert expressions from infix notation to postfix notation. Let's now go over the actual translation rules. So the first rule is we, if we read an operand, we'll just write it to our output. It's pretty straightforward. If we read an open parenthesis, we'll push that onto the stack. Now, what if we read a closed parenthesis? Well, what we'll do is as long as the stack is not empty, we'll pop an item. Now, if that item is not a, the open parenthesis, then we'll write it to our output. And then we'll stop whenever the item that's popped is the open parenthesis. So we just keep popping and adding those items onto the output string until we either get to the end of the stack or until we get to the open parenthesis that should be in the stack. Now, what if we read an operator? Well, that gets a little tricky. So what we do is we first check the stack. If the stack is empty, then we need to push the operator onto the stack because we're not ready to evaluate anything just yet. Now, let's suppose the stack is not empty. So while the stack is not empty, we're going to pop an item. Now, if that item is an open parenthesis, we'll push that back onto the stack. Now, if the item is an operator, we have to check the precedence level. So if the item that we pop has a lower precedence than the current operator, well, we're going to push that back onto the stack. Now, what if the item that we pop has a greater or equal precedence? Um, then what we're going to do is we're just going to output that item to the output string. And then we're just going to keep repeating this until the... Uh, the popped operator has a lower precedence or we get the open parentheses. And then finally, we're just going to push the original operator onto the stack. Now, if there are no more items, then we would just pop and output each remaining item that's left in the stack. This translation, this conversion actually takes O of N time. And that's because we just go through the input with just one pass. We start the, the very beginning, we go all the way to the end, and we get our conversion. So this is a linear time algorithm. Let's go back to our A plus B minus C example and see how we would parse this and follow those rules for translating from infix to postfix. We first read an A, and since that is an operand, our rule is to write the operand to the output, so we write the A to our postfix. We then read the plus sign, so our rule is to check the stack since we read an operator. Since it's empty, we would push the plus sign onto the stack. We then read the B. Our rule is since we read an operand, we would immediately write it to the output. We then read the minus sign and we check the stack at this point. It's not empty. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop the stack. Now at this point, we pop the plus sign and that has the same precedence level as the minus sign. So the rule says to output the popped item, therefore we would uh, output the plus sign in our postfix form. And then we would push the minus sign onto the stack. We then read the C, so that's the operand, so we write that to the output. And finally, we get to the end of our infix string so we need to pop over the leftover items and then output it. In this case, it's just the one minus sign. So we pop that off the stack and we write that to the end of our postfix string. Now let's apply the rules to translating A plus B times C. We read the A, so we're going to write A to our output. We read the plus sign. So since the stack is empty, we're going to push the plus sign onto the stack. We then read the B. So we're going to write that directly to our output. We then read the multiplication symbol. So since that is an operator and our stack is not empty, we're going to pop the stack. In this case, the item that we pop is the plus sign and it has a lower precedence, which means we're going to push that back onto the stack. Finally, we will push the multiplication symbol onto the stack as well. We next read the C in our string, so we write that operand directly to our output. We then get to the end of the string, which means we need to pop everything that's left over in the stack and write it to our output. 
So we're gonna pop the stack and we get the multiplication symbol. So we're gonna write that in our output string. We then pop the plus sign and we write that to the end of our output string. And that completes uh, this particular expression. Now let's do one more example. This would be the A times B plus C in parentheses example, and we'll see how the parentheses are applied to our translation rules. So we first read the A, we write that to our output. We then read the multiplication symbol. So since the stack is empty, we're gonna push that onto the stack. We then read the left parentheses symbol. According to our rules, we would push that onto the stack. We then read the B, so we're going to write that to our output. We then read the plus sign. So according to our rules, the stack is not empty, so we're gonna pop the stack. Now at this point, we popped the open parentheses. So according to our rules, we're gonna push that back onto the stack. We'll then push the plus sign onto the stack. We next read the C, so since that's an operand, we're going to write that onto our output. We then read a closed parenthesis. So according to our rules, we're gonna pop whatever is on the stack and write it to our output. In this case, the top of the stack was the plus sign. We pop that and write it to our output. And then we would continue doing this until we read the open parenthesis. Well, so in this case, the next thing that we pop is the open parenthesis. So we would say we're done popping, we don't write anything else onto the output string. We're then at the end of our infix notation, so we're gonna pop everything that's left over and output it to our string. In this case, we just have the multiplication symbol left, so we pop that and we write it to our output.